Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at the errors.join method which was recently introduced to the Go standard library in the 1.20 release and I'm going to show you how you can use it to simplify the way that you pass errors through the various layers of your applications. Cool. So let's dive right in. Now in Go it's not unusual for you to have multiple layers of your application and each of these layers will be responsible for different aspects. So you might have a repository layer, which is responsible for communicating with the database and attempting to execute SQL or NoSQL queries against the said database. Now, for the purposes of this video, we're keeping it nice and simple. We're not talking directly to a database, but we're instead faking a database interaction. Now, in this function here, get user from DB, if we pass in an ID that does not exist, then we're going to be returning the SQL.errorNoRows error, which is a predefined error within the SQL package. Now, moving one layer up from our repository layer, we are going to have a fetch user profile function, which is going to handle fetching from the database and then handling any errors that return from it. Now, previous to go 1.20, if we wanted to join errors, we could do that by wrapping it using something like the error.f method in the format package, and then using the percentage w directive to pass in said error. Now, whilst this approach did work, there were some limitations with it. Now, the key limitation was that you couldn't wrap multiple errors together prior to Go 1.20 being released. Now, this might not sound like a big deal, but for many application developers, this was a bit of a pain in the ass in terms of how you handled the errors coming from functions such as fetch user, user profile. Now let's take a look at a concrete example of what issues this would present developers in the past. Now in our main function, we're attempting to call this fetch user profile function. We're passing in the context and we're passing in an ID. Now when we're handling the error, if we want to have different logic depending on what type of error is returned, then we have to use the lower level errors that have been defined, such as SQL.ErrorNoRows. Now, thankfully, this is where errors.join can improve our lives. Now, say we wanted to define something like an error user not found error at the top of our package. We could then use the errors.join method. So errors.join and we could then pass in a list of errors that we want to squash together effectively. So let's do the original error and then error user not found. And then instead within our main function, instead of relying on the lower level errors, we could then do a determination based on the higher level error that we've passed. Now let's verify this all works as we intend it to. So let's do go run main.go. And as you can see, the first print line statement is executed. And then when we return an error from fetch user profile, this logic then is truthy. And we print out the error, which is the combination of SQL, no rows in result set, and could not find user. Now, if you do prefer, we can still use the error F method from the format package to still pass or join multiple errors thanks to the updates that have been made in Go 1.20. Now to do that, we create a format string and we pass in the percentage W format directive for each of the individual errors that we wish to join together. Now let's go into the terminal and try and run this once again. So go run main.go. And as you can see, this still satisfies the errors.is check for error user not found as we have been able to wrap them together using this statement here. Cool. So that's all we're going to cover within this tutorial. Now, this was a really exciting addition to the standard library, and I hope you find it useful for improving the way that you propagate errors through your own Go applications. Now, as always, if you found this video useful, then please leave a like and let me know in the comment section down below. And if you fancy, Subscribe to my channel for more Go programming content. Cheers.